meeting to order of the Milltown Area Town Hall. And unfortunately, we don't have minutes to approve, so we'll move on. Okay. Okay. Um, there's been a, the next next item on the agenda is the introduction of the new secretary. She's this fine lady here, Margaret. Hi, Hi Margaret. Hey. Hey. She will be taking over for this fine gentleman over here, Ken. <laughs> Are you going to stay on the board? Or is your turn My turn's up. Uh -huh. So we'll get to all that. Lucky so, me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, want to say, you, you want to say anything? Oh, I'm excited to do this. I've never done anything like it before. I hope we can you know, make Middletown strong, come back from all of this stronger, better, and a great place to live still. That's my the, goal. Do you have the mission statement to read? No, I do not. You do or not yet? No. <laughs> Just checking. I need yeah. to take a look at that. Is it somewhere around here? Like yeah. I might have it in my okay. computer somewhere. Uh, somewhere. Okay. Okay. I will look for it. You, we, we will get it to her. I just got handed stuff by Fletcher. He says he'll see you later. And he left town. Yeah. So, anyways, okay. Yeah. Next, public input. Anybody can speak on anything that's not on the agenda for three minutes. But anybody, I'll start on this side. Marlene. Well, Fletcher's not here today, but I just wanted to say thank you to Fletcher for spearheading the lights in our park and getting that done. Um, I think he did most of it kind of on his own, and I just wanted to say thank you. Right. Okay. Oh, shoot, sorry. Anybody else like to speak? I have uh, to say something. Of course but I do, but off. I have to turn it off. Turn your phone off. I'm working on it. <laughs> Would you like me to answer while you talk to the public? No, I want, I want to turn it okay. completely so it's not doing that other one. Okay. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know because a lot of people have asked me about the roads because we have contractors here who aren't from here and they're in empty trucks and they're bouncing on our roads and our roads weren't in very good shape to begin with. And so um, I went to the task force meeting and it was announced that the county is working on um, with the with the state on funds when this is all over to upgrade and repair our roads and I just think that's important for everybody to be aware of that that's working we want to nice yeah. okay Lay in the back seeing no hands for public comment I'll close it move to the next item um, is the design and new if, if we choose a new location of the welcome to Middletown signs on either end. Um, our signs got damaged during the fire, and of course we need some upgrade to begin with, so here's our chance to do a couple of things. Uh, it's been suggested maybe we have a, a competition of a design and uh, have maybe have a committee put together to select the design in the end. Um, basically, uh, open the item up for discussion. The storms. Um, the Rotary are the ones who put up the welcome signs, and I believe that they are still and are looking at replacing those signs. So it seems to me that MAP needs to get together with the Rotary oh, yeah. and see what they're doing. I know that a, um, a young man contacted me, and I knew the Rotary had done the signs, so I sent him to them. He's an, uh, doing an Eagle Scout project and wanted to know if he could do the signs. And so I put him in contact with the Rotary a few weeks ago. Okay. So just so Matt's aware that it's generally something that the Rot Rotary in the past has done. Mm -hmm. it, but it doesn't mean that it can't be a collaboration if they know there's interest. Okay. So. It did have the logo on it though, right? In terms of any design, it would might still have the Rotary logo featured on it. Well, it, it will have everything. Sure. It'll have the Lions, it'll have the Rotary, it'll have any of the clubs. That's horse. I thought several months back there was someone who appeared at a map meeting saying that a company in St. Helena or someone wanted to do some metal signs and were willing to do it professionally and donate it. Does anybody recall that? No. Really? Oh, it's not a dream. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Christmas cheer must have hit early. <laughs> I, I wanted to ask if there's anything left of the old signs, because it looks like one of them's on the ground right outside by the creek over there. And if there's any portion of it left, if we could do something to signify what 
happened to all of us down here on that day? Well, speak of that. And you're right, there are portions of the signs still left on both ends, I believe. There was a suggestion I heard today if somebody thought, you know, how they had the, basically they had the poles, the big poles the, yeah. on the sign in between, that maybe we take some of these trees <laughs> and make them the poles and then put the sign. I'm not sure. Well, at some point it might, but, yeah. it, but and again, just food for thought, somebody's suggestion. Okay. So that was one. But again, there is there is an issue here with, if the rotary's done it historically, we probably need to have somebody get with the rotary okay. and and um, and decide how we, how they might, if they, how they're going to handle it. If they're putting up the funds, then... Well, this is what I'm asking about is right. if there's any portion of the old science left to bring to make sure they don't get burnt up, destroyed, or ruined and see if we can use them. Like somewhere. make some kind of a monument. I don't want to a call it a monument, or but a memento or, a memento or what, the, yeah, so <laughs> what we went through with what, the fire. This I was about to say, like, uh, get a picture of our clock out here when the electric went out. And it's still out there at the same time. Still we still lost at the same time. We lost our electricity. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, because it, it, I know it's all burnt up and everything like that, but, you know, it's like the, the plaques that are on the ground around the trees and stuff, you know, those are mementos of what happened in the town here throughout its, and I think if we just hang on to that and figure out something to do. We with could it, put it at cool. the Gibson Museum. That's, I was kind of thinking like something like that. the history of this area. Yeah, or any of that here in the park, but I think the museum would probably. The museum would be better, yeah. I, in my opinion. I, I just don't like, want to see. Like it, I just don't want to see state. it chucked because it's yeah. one of the things that kind sure, of survived. No, and I wouldn't even have thought of that. That's a great idea, in my opinion. Yeah, no, that's a no, good idea. One of the one of the thoughts I've always had for a while, and I don't know how this is, is, is moving the signs, at least on this end, out toward East Road. It's uh, Twin by the, across the road from Twin, Twin Pine, Pine. Yeah. area, signifying yes, welcome middle town area. And then maybe up to like St. Helena Avenue or Lane, St. Helena Lane, Lane yeah. uh, on the other side. Now I don't, I don't know if that, but again, it, it, it probably is all for naught until we get with the Rotary if they've been planning on doing this, so that we're not duplicating efforts. So, who would like to be the liaison to the road? Rotary. Well, I know both the ladies that are very active. So Thank I'm you, Miss Darms. I'll talk to you. <laughs> and you were looking right at me. Yes, I was. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. So, so next month, come back and we'll we'll figure out a plan of whether it's a uh, put the, get the community a shot at designs or something like this or suggestions. Or at least or, location. If nothing yeah, else. Yeah, if nothing else. Okay. okay. So Got that, it. we'll table that to next. Check. Month. Check. Okay. Number six. Presentation from Phoenix Rice. Well, let's put it this way. Uh, there was some miscommunication. They were under the impression they were present next month. So that's what we've, uh, that got uh, relayed this morning. So they will be making that presentation next month. So, so I will pass on that. The next one, nomination for the opening of the, the board. There's three of us, right, Michael? Right. Do you want me to talk, speak to that? Yep. Go ahead. Okay. So, right. Uh, there are two seats in Middletown proper whose terms expire uh, next month. And then there's one at large seat. So Ken and I uh, occupy seats one and two for Middletown proper. And I'm not interested in serving. I don't know what uh, Ken's plans are. And then Claude sits in one of the at large seats that's open. Expired. Uh, expired. So if you if you live outside the boundaries of Middletown proper, which I could describe if you want me to, then you could be uh, nominated for an at-large seat. Anderson Springs West, Rancheria Road South would be an at-large. At uh, Lokonomi East, and then uh, Grange Road North. So anybody in Hidden Valley Lake would be, you know, in an at-large seat nominee. I, I have something I want to ask for, quick, Mike. I thought that it was opened up where there weren't areas anymore. That Middletown kept their area, but everybody else had to be at-large. Is that what happened? I'm just curious. 
Uh, yeah, that, that, that's what I thought I was trying to describe. So, it wasn't clear. But at one point, what we had said in the very beginning of MAP, and then it got changed, this, I'm just trying to be clear on this, yeah. that there was a Cobb representative, there was a Hidden Valley representative, there was an, a representative off of Butts Canyon, and there was a representative. There were seven seats at the right. beginning. Right. And this is before me. But there were seven seats right. to represent basically from the county line, the county lines on Butts and 29, all the way up to the upper part of the Spruce Grove, up to Cobb, is pretty much the South County Fire District. Representatives. Were, they were hoping it kind of was divided up into seven areas that they would have. When math first began, it uh, didn't exactly you know, take off like that, so they, they reduced it down to, to five. And, right. And, and, and with the seven right. board members, we were required to have five to meet a quorum, and we would not get that. Yeah, I remember in one right. stretch, it was three meetings in a row, we couldn't conduct business because we didn't have a quorum. So now with five seats for five board members all we need is a quorum of three and we've been able to proceed more efficiently under that under that structure right no i understand that i understand that well one of the reasons that i'm asking is because there's someone i want to nominate who is from cobb mountain area and and i think that it's nice to have people if we can from different Absolutely. areas yeah, that they on the board eligible so. for an at-large seat I, I just mentioned Right. Claude. Right, right, I know. Yeah, because I'm the guy that's outside right now. <laughs> um, but, but just real quick, in, in, in as far as nominations go on that, I want to make sure everybody's aware or pass on the word. And if I'm politically incorrect, you can shoot me later. This is not a Thursday night get-together social club. If, if, if you want to make it that, that's what it happens. It can happen. But it, it does, we have relevance within the community, within the county who we represent, the people here. We, the board facilitates whatever the community wants to discuss as far as the uh, issues, product, services, whatever's going on. So it is a two-year commitment, and hopefully you make the majority of the meetings. Um, we, you know, it's also to inform uh, things that are coming down that maybe the county has done that maybe does to get the word out that you can't make it up to the board of supervisors meetings or something like that. Also, for us to do the reverse, if 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 there's a topic that concerns this area, we we work with our boards of supervisor members, which would both predominantly is Jim Comstock currently here, but we also fall in the Rob Browns area too. Um, we know Comstock's not seeking re-election. Uh, we have two people in the audience that are seeking that seat, and, 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 and we'll be working, I'm sure, the next year very hard to earn that seat. And, uh, but but the, the thing is, is that if you're coming in with preconceived ideas, you're probably not a good person here for the board. If you come in with an open mind that you're here to hear what the people are and what they want, yeah, I got things I'd like to do, but they may not necessarily fit in, so I, I just have to back off. So I just want to make sure that everybody understands what math is about. We're just here to represent and take what the people tell us to do and pass it on to the county so that they're aware of the South County views on whatever the issues might be. So with that said, I open it up for nominations, okay. if there are any. I'd like to nominate um, Nate Duff. He's from Cobb Mountain. Yeah. Right. Congratulations. <laughs> Duff. 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 I'm sorry. Duff. Sorry, sorry. I'm, oh. Like stuff, but Jeff. Do you need a second? Uh, no, right now we're just putting, we'll put them in. What we'll do is next month, we'll have the, the, the nominees kind of give a little the presentation about themselves and that, and then uh, at that point, um, I believe the election held shortly after that. Uh, that's at least how I wound up doing it. I think. You got I'd like to nominate John Hess from Penn Valley. Good. There you go. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
And I'd like to uh, nominate Greg Van Oss. And my understanding, he lives on Mokonomi. So he would, he would fall within Middletown proper. And we need another nominee for Middletown proper because there are two seats expired. Okay. But that's not a Greg Von Oss. criteria, is it? You know, I mean, I believe it does say in the bylaws that there, there isn't two. Okay. I, it, I gotta look at the bylaws, but I believe that it does too. Okay. It does. Okay. And the name is Cobb. And no. Abe. What did you say? Nate's from Cobb. Oh, okay. Was John has his Hidden Valley. Valley. And Greg. Middletown property. Yes. And I, I, I would like to put my name back into the picture again, from, also from outside. I'll do more count properly. I'll add my sorry, what did you say, Linda? I, I will put my name into the hat for Middletown proper. Hey, Linda. All right. She's bad. <laughs> <laughs> She's uh -oh. never what? <laughs> so any, any other? Okay, I will uh, close the uh, nominations at this point, and then I want to make sure all these individuals are registered voters in Lake County. Is that correct? Okay. Voting? Right. What's that? No. <laughs> <laughs> because that's one of the requirements. I see. I'm right. teasing. Yeah. I am. I know you. Are. <laughs> okay. So I think the next meeting we'll get familiar with everybody and go from there. Okay. And and. In the past, it's also if there's somebody that's not here, they were able to be nominated next meeting. Me, me, right? So, the next meeting, so because there aren't a lot of people here, so you know there might be more. Correct. This is kind of a busy month for people. Henry, are, are you not running again? Correct. Okay. <laughs> I'm retired. Okay. <laughs> again. Again. <laughs> again. Yeah. Okay. So we're closed on that. So. Before I get through this, I want, want to say a couple of things. Um, one is we have our postal box deal, and every year we all usually reach in and throw a couple of bucks into the equation to pay for it. It's a whole $60. Didn't I just do that? No. Didn't that just happen? Is that just board members and pending board members? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not proud. I'll take money from anybody. <laughs> just one. Oh, I didn't somebody check to see if that was supposed to be at no charge? That was, uh, yes, I did. Uh huh. And um, as a process to do, uh, oh, okay. pretty complicated one. Um, you can check again. It's still in the market website. No, no, but one thing. Uh, we can we can make up for it here. Yeah, I was gonna say that if you're if you if they don't deliver mail here. Right. 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 Secretary so we put in $10. You put in 11 All right. Oh. <laughs> we'll get our junk mail for the next year again. Okay. Thank you to everybody. The, the one other thing that um, popped up, and I'm going to add a, a little since we think right. Yesterday was a meeting down at Twin Pines of the um, economy outlook and forecast moving towards 2020. A couple of things I brought to mind here, is, especially for the people that are looking to uh, sit on the board next year. We've got a number of things coming up. Of course, there's going to be, a, like I just mentioned, a change in the main member of the board of supervisors we will be reporting to. Um, there are a number of things with the, the cleanup that's going on. One of them is the future of how to area will turn out, be whatever it becomes. Um, we did get the uh, $1.4 million grant money for the trail. That'll be part of next year's 
uh, items that we'll have to deal with uh, on the area plan. There, there's a lot for 2016, and so uh, it, it is important that the, when you talk to your friends and that, that uh, they do participate and not be armchair quarterbacks later when they don't get what they think they should have or something. So I just want to let you all know that 2016 is going to be an important year for Middletown Area Town Hall and getting our views out to the county and all that. Um, yesterday's meeting, which I attended uh, myself, was informative. A lot of the information, like me, I already had heard some of it, um, but it, it was informative. But you, you, there was a lot of people from out of the area who were help, trying to help help guide us and influence it. But the, the reality is it belongs to the community, so everybody needs to participate in that as much as possible. And all I can say is, uh, unfortunately, Matt got their letter today, because this is our meeting, and the meeting was yesterday. But, but in any way, so there, was a, it, there was a good um, um, good turnout. It was a lot bigger than I thought. And I, I think Monica, I should applaud you for your efforts there, and it, it, it was it was informative. So um, that yes, Marley. Um, did they talk anything about the economic comeback? Or That's what this is about. Okay, what, yeah. what it was about. Okay, was the first step of, of, of okay, you, we're going through the cleanup phase right now. Of course, we were promised we'd be done by January, but unfortunately, that's not going to happen. It okay, long. it's going it's going to be a lot longer. Uh, the whole process will be a lot longer. So, uh, as far as that, what's left afterwards depends on what we can attract from other areas to 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 move their businesses into the area to help boost the economy or whatever. So, we are, uh, and it was it was very well known. I think we all know we're pretty much a bedroom community. Uh, a lot of people travel over the hill every day to go to work. So uh, that, that was main main note of, and then, yes. But they're moving forward on that project, the senior housing. They're putting in roads yes. and things. Yeah. So that's going to help with our economic as well. Yeah, it Probably was interesting. The, the one thing I think yeah. probably the most interesting was they had the pie of makeup of the industry the trees, in the yeah. county, yeah. and, and that, that was pretty yeah. interesting. How yeah. how heavy that was in in certain areas, mm -hmm. um, which good in some ways and not so good in others. Um, Just like everything. Very, yeah. very well, well but like the catch was. Coming here's... up with the balance between, like, you know, the senior housing with the fixed incomes, but also focusing more right. on, like, trying to get manufacturing. The, the two biggest growth areas were government mm -hmm. and healthcare, healthcare, healthcare. and healthcare. nursing, that type of area. Those were the two biggest, which, great, we're taking care of people, but it doesn't do a lot in terms of, um, tax revenue and that kind yeah, of thing. Sure. So it's, it's a service, it is a service industry and it's high qualified and it brings a lot of better paying job, type of job. You call it the ex export products or export services as far as yeah. producing yeah. something so that goes out of the county yeah. and brings money in. Bring, have businesses here that sell and bring revenue back in. Can I ask a question about that? Is When this development's being built, is it planned to have its own medical facilities in it? If it's seen, is senior housing? Uh, I, I think it's more like an Oakmont, I guess, and as far as yeah, that these are in order to live there, but it's not a health care facility. Okay, I know there's a range of services from, like, you can live there, there's a some assisted living. and Okay, yeah. so there is some assisted yes. living, but there's not a, ski a skilled nursing facility. No. Taught. Because what my, my concern with that is that they're not planning on more medical staff or access to more medical care, because seniors are the largest consumers of medical care there are you know small children and seniors the clinic that we have here is so overwhelmed as it is with trying to get patients in there it's just I, it's going to tax that whole medical what we have available here that much more also it's one of the reasons or one of the main reasons people move out of the area as they mature is, is because, because <laughs> we're so far from the health services. Exactly, right. exactly. So, I mean, it's like nice to have those incomes come up, but it's not, 
addressing the other side of the issue about trying to generate more money from the tax basis. Right. And part of it will be if we have more people coming in that need health services, we're going to get some more medical officers. Many of yeah. I mean, it's kind of like, well, you know, is you're going to get be, supply or demand. So yeah. supply and demand. That's it originally, when Ken Porter built the project over there in Hidden Valley Lake, that's what the intention was, that there would be medical offices there. Yeah. And they haven't filled up, but that's, again, based on supply and demand. Yeah. So and the population changed. And Adventist Health owns that property there in town. And at one point, they had drawings they were getting ready to build, and Sutter. that's when the that's economy Sutter. came. That's yeah. Sutter. 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 Sutter has yeah. the property. Sutter has the property. I mean, yeah, it's because if, yeah, right if you try to get an appointment over here, at, it, it's a month to get yeah. an appointment They're there. They're not there's taking people. I, I no. was going to say the economic outlook was for the whole county versus South County. County, right. Yeah. That's true. That's very true. It was yes. that way. Well, and, and, and there is, in county. my mind, and I'm, 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 and my mind can be all screwed up, but in my <laughs> mind, uh, what I heard was there was, I like what I heard, okay? Mm -hmm. The problem is looking at our general plan and, and how it may alter because that's what everybody, the planning commission, all those have to go based on the ordinances and all that that have how you develop from there. Now, currently we've, on some, on the rebuilding of housing and that, we've, we've taken some, you know, the county's been able to take some latitude, and, and, mm -hmm. but there are certain things they have to stick to. That's where, you, how does it affect what you bring into it? Uh, and whether it's ag or, or tourism or some type of a, what I call research development or something along these lines, because uh, the heavy manufacturer can't come here. We, we just don't have those certain things here that that they demand. Light manufacturing might, but that's about it. You don't have the infrastructure in the county. There's no natural gas in the county. Yeah. Yeah. We don't yeah. have the natural supply of electricity, so we import most of it. If we had if we had a county policy for everything that gets built from this point on, had to have solar, so mm -hmm. you know, then then we could start working towards a, a zero need for additional electricity being transported into the county. Uh, you know, we don't we don't have a four lane road anywhere in or out of the county. You know, and highways are, you know, you figure on highways on millions of dollars a mile. You know, you want to build a tunnel through Napa so you got a decent road, you top you five hundred thousand dollars a foot. Okay. The the reason I like I said I the discussion will probably be down the road. I just wanted to let everybody know that it is it's a high agenda item for two thousand sixteen is the the, the few, how we're coming back, how strong we're coming back. Yes. Oh. Obviously I <laughs> Well, I just wanted to say something about the the economic yes. outlook. For everybody in the room who uh, did not attend, if you'd like to to give me your email address so we can follow up with, with information is there will be follow up for the participants who who attended, who, who submitted their email addresses. Uh, but again, the purpose of the, as Boris was saying, the purpose of the event was actually countywide. It originated there, but of course, um, it got spurred into action and to happen now because of the, in the aftermath of the Valley Fire and the significant impact that Sapling County will have on all of Lake County. So, and this year was an opportunity to bring together um, well, we had about 180, 185 people from throughout the county, so That's representing a lot of different entities from hospitals, banks, real estate, the colleges, um, so general business, agriculture. So, I mean, there was a wide mix of people with the uh, mayors of both cities, uh, members from the city councils, as well as county representatives. So it was very well attended by a wide range of people in the county. Uh, gave everybody an opportunity of over a three-hour period of time from two to five uh, to uh, kind of explore economic possibilities and look at the <coughs> challenges facing Lake County and facing South Lake County, um, and what are we going to do about it? Of course. Yeah. About two months ago, three months ago, Marymount College had a, a program that looked at um, leadership in the county and out of that came a community visioning team and they were looking at each area in the county and grouped them together and said what are your strengths what are the assets what are the things that we want to use to 
promote each area. And they're continuing to meet, and they're going to be meeting at Lake Family Resource Center next Monday. And Monica, I think, is going to lead the South County section of it. Um, and one of the things that they're doing is doing it in conjunction with Wellville and saying not only are we looking at economic improvements, but looking at the health of our community, of individuals, and how we can promote the beauty of this area and, and really come into our own uh, competing with other counties, whether it's Sonoma, Mendocino, or, or Napa, those that are surrounding us, because we are as beautiful, if not more beautiful than they are, but yet there are many more challenges for us that we have to overcome too. So with that, I just wanted to make sure everybody knew what their what 2016 looked like. 2015 definitely changed drastically towards the winter. Yeah, that was a serious roller coaster. One, one, one last thing I'd like to make mention, and Miss Larson's dedication. Oh. <laughs> Since the day she approached Fletcher and I in the cowpoke one day and wanted to be more, she has done everything and then some. So thank you so much for covering and keeping up. And, and Waco should. News covered the economic outlook. Also. We should have a video. It will be, yeah. The, okay, Mike, so there's your answer to your question. I told you there'd be a video. <laughs> okay. Oh, and be sure and thank her for the filming that she did before people could return because oh. it let folks yeah. know oh, that yeah. we were still here. Yeah, here. That yeah. was so important for this community. And just so you know, the TV crews were up on the road reporting tonight on Yeah, the I just saw it. What were they doing? What's that? I'm no, probably talking here, about rain. rain. They were so, also down at yeah, the right. South Lake County Fire had their Christmas event tonight. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, so they, they, they went down to the hangout. Yeah. Okay, so with our last meeting of 2016, anybody got any further comments? Oh, happy holidays. Yes, <laughs> I do. I'm sorry. Okay. No, you go, go for it. So on the way out, there's the paper bags, and I brought some uh, persimmons. Oh, so it's a basket out here on the table, so everybody's welcome to take some. Okay. So persimmon treats. Very grateful. Very grateful. <laughs> um, I don't know if anybody else has been looking at the LakeCountyRecovery.com, but they came up with some new projections as far as potential flooding for the South County area here. Um, they're saying there's potential for a 20% increase on on Dry Creek, 60% increase on Puda, 90% on Harbin Creek, and 80% chance on Big Canyon Creek, and an additional 30% on Gallagher, and a 50% on Puda at Hidden Valley. So, um, look at flood insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Also, now. also the firehouse will have sandbags. Yeah. If you have a need for sandbags, they, they have them. Yeah. yeah, they do have the sandbags, but also the flood insurance has to be in place 30 days prior to any event. Ron Manutri got me some for 15 days. For 15 days. Oh, really? Okay. Uh -huh. So okay. check with Ron Manutri. Okay. Okay. All right. With that, I wish you all a very happy See you next Merry time. Christmas. <laughs> Great meeting. Good How about that? Fletcher drags him out. We're done. Thank you.